hall is not full it has full of chairs and uh, for me it is not new to address a vacant hall or address a few chairs but I, I think like there are a lot of intelligent people out here I can talk to them and it is quite difficult I mean if I talk from your side it's quite difficult to listen about art criticism or art history just before lunch hours I mean I know that somewhere out there there is lunch is laid out and also after lunch the two o'clock session both are sleep inducing but here the question is art criticism dead why it is silent actually this topic was given to me by mrs murugan basu and apparently i took it as a kind of team on which i could work and present a paper it's a very small paper i will read out and also like i engage by talking external the question is why art criticism is silent today if it is silent it is a sort of accusation against people like me because i am an art critic or there are few art critics in, in this hall it's an accusation so by making art criticism silent or facilitating silence for art criticism in fact we are actually becoming silent this tribe of art critics are becoming silent maybe i would agree with it so i will dare to go into the paper and my presentation my visual presentation has doesn't have much to do with the, you know like what i am talking but it is just just to visually engage you with some with some some kind of you know interesting visions so i title my paper expanding spaces of art criticism in this paper i have made an attempt to identify the locations where art critical engagements used to take place vigorously and also how they used to help the viewer in identifying the right kind of art and interesting artists who used to create it traditionally we expect art criticism to happen in newspaper columns next 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 slide yeah magazines art magazine articles detailed critical analysis of the works of art and the context of its production in journals that we call all of them as popular mediums whenever we take a newspaper there used to be times like when uh, sariyu doshi dr sariyu doshi presented uh, this paper uh, about uh, jj school you must be knowing like walter langhammer karl kandhalwala people like this they used to write the audience used to wait for or the readers used to wait for the critical comments of these people so that they can go and watch this show it is almost like uh, the star rating you must be know like this you know famous film critics uh, you know uh, like khalid mohammed and all they give a very erudite opinion on the films and you actually almost form your opinion about the film and then you decide and when you write your strong opinion you will lose the column that is what happened to khalid mohammed he was working and when he he comes up with certain kind of a very caustic ideas caustic opinion about certain movies so when you when you are very straight when you are very direct when you are very sharp in your criticism you may even lose your column but anyway there was a wonderful time the good old days even before my my own birth you know in those days there used to be very famous art critics whose opinion was considered to be you know the the the, the benchmark for deciding the you know the, the 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 weight and the sharpness and the depth of a work of art or the aesthetic quality of a work of art in my time also in our time also we could see so many art critics writing in i'm talking from my delhi experience like you know krishna chaitanya uh, Sunit Chopra, Gayatri Sinha, Uma Nair, so many people like that writing. I mean, I I I joined this tribe sometime in mid 90s. 
Yeah. Keshav Malik. Ah, Keshav definitely Keshav Malik. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I can. I should. Have, I should have mentioned Mr. Keshav Malik. There are so many, so many wonderful people who actually drew people through their writing, drew the people to the galleries. So, so we used to wait for such columns. Today, today we know that these pages have been changed. These pages have become page three. We all know that. Like who attended what? Who attended what kind of dues? They call it dues. So, anyway, these kind of columns, like the the, the art, art criticism, used to appear in this kind of columns, and we used to call them as popular. I mean, we used to tell them as the columns in the popular mediums. The, in the second part of this paper, I would also uh, elucidate uh, how critical spaces have moved from one zone to the another, or one zone to another. A natural shift made possible by the an advent of information and communication technology, which is popularly popularly known as ICT. At the same time, I would also like to see which are the grey areas of art critical practices where art criticism art criticism happens not so vigorously. I qualify these spaces as passive locations of art criticism or in or art engagement and the kind of critical engagement happening there as mm. art, passive art criticism. I will come to that uh, later. The theme critical silences in popular media and art scenario. This was the theme which was given to me. Critical silences in popular media and art scenario is slightly deceptive mainly because it does not explain whether art, art, criticism, art criticism has become silent in popular mediums or the silence maintained by art criticism is critical or the very absence of art criticism is critical therefore serious indicator uh, therefore it is a serious indicator of certain socio cultural lack that we experience today so in some way art criticism is silence uh, is in silence or art criticism is silent it has moved into a kind of very very silent zone the origin of Art criticism is comparatively new and could claim, if at all we could claim, only a history of around 200 years. Started off as a value judgment process of a work of art based on the canons created by art history, art criticism originally attempted explaining works of art which had moved from the familiar zones of religion and politics. Art used to be a part of religion and art used to be a part of power, power power politics i mean i mean if you if you study history especially the renaissance history of the west you will come to know that uh, you come to know how art was related to or intricately related to uh, you know the, the 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 forces of religion and uh, power politics so when art critic uh, art moved away from religion and politics art criticism also grew along with it <laughs> The contextual detachment of a work of art facilitated by the mercantile society and the pivotal advent of individual artists as the creators, creators of art needed mediation via informed agencies so that a larger audience could understand the individual, ex individual explorations of the artist in their respective mediums often colored by individual interpretation of the familiar and the innovative. I mean, to, to put it in different words, if an artist, I mean, you, you, if you go to this art camp happening as a part of uh, Jaipur Art Summit here, each artist has a way of working, a style of working. And not only what he or she expresses on the canvas or on the paper, on the, any, on any kind of, or through any kind of medium, but the personal lifestyle, each person has a different lifestyle. Each person is a myth. Each person, each artist is a story. There is a history around this. There is a story around this artist. So, somebody should actually mediate this story, this mythology and weave together with their aesthetics and present it before, before a larger audience. Now, you may be knowing that Tayo Mehta, V.S. Gaithonde, Raza, Susa, M. F. Hussain, all these people are actually collecting a lot of money in the auction market, in the international auction market. How? Till V.S. Gaithonde's work actually collected 6 crore rupees or 7 crore rupees in international auction market. Nobody knew about him. People started literally digging up the history about this artist 
once they get financially rich not they their works get financially valuable so there is there is a new 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 tendency in our art market that we need to create stories and mythologies around artists if the, you don't have any story around you if you don't have any registration it is not just about dig, digitally registering or documenting or archiving your works of art but creating a personal myth each artist each art critic art historian each person in the society has some sort of history some sort of mythology around it and especially when he or she is an artist that mythology becomes very handy when the work of art works of art done by this particular artist move into the market zone today we are all scrambling through the libraries archives etc etc in order to find out what vs gaitonde had done in that particular year so we need uh, provenance we need some sort of authentication so that's why art critics become important their silence if at all it is forced will become very important will, will become questionable maybe at some point it will become questionable because their silence is actually depriving the art scene of its own mythologies its own myths its own histories <clears throat> as art criticism had been an offshoot of traditional art history in the beginning using the same methodologies of art history art criticism in the post industrial societies took a different course in order to establish an autonomous intellectual practice purely based on interpretations of themes technique execution and their composite relevance in the context within which they were originated so it was a part of art history like if you know giorgio vasari who actually wrote the lives of artists during the renaissance 15th century europe so he was the one first actually introduced to this kind of uh, you know elucidating or narrating the lives of the artist so that became art history i mean that became a part of the art history discipline but later on slowly slowly art criticism started getting on its own autonomous stature in the art discourse in due course of sorry interestingly the autonomy of art criticism in due course of time became a source material for art history so it is an interesting reversal initially art criticism came off from art art history later art history started de depending more on art critical discourse that means like tomorrow if i am writing a book on or an art history work or art history book on say vs gaitonde or uh, sh rasa art criticism in fact started giving material for art history in a larger context and today art criticism masquerades as art history and art history cannot be independent of art history uh, art critical methodologies <coughs> so now this question of uh, what happened to art art criticism next <coughs> skip this sorry <coughs> skip this skip mm. <coughs> so this is what somehow we see art art criticism re art criticism is all about who attends what however it is imperative to see that the proliferation of art criticism largely depended on the dissemination of information through the advent of printing technology in the 15th century so i'm talking a very primary thing like in 15th century we developed or the western world innovated the printing technology once printing technology was in place whoever whoever wanted to read they could get the copies today it is i mean i can just to take another example previously there was a time like the photography photography was something very special because only those people who could afford to have or afford to handle a camera those people were known as photographers definitely there 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 used to be very great photographers but today it is democratized because in every mobile phone there is a camera so anybody could take a photography similarly if you look at facebook you can see that when we used to read poets novelists you know essays chroniclers etc etc in print media so we also had a sort of you know urge to write about us ourselves but when facebook came this collab this huge wall that exist that had once existed between the writers and the readers collapsed considerably and we all became writers as well as readers so the same way today 
with the with the advent of printing technology people started reading people started people wanted to know more about art or society or human life etc introduction of rotary press by the 19th century gave birth to a number of publications and side by side the increasing number of literate populace populace needed more and more inspiring ideations through the published material basically when the the literate public increased they wanted to read more however this scenario was not without its ideological pinning both colonialism and anti colonial movements had given enough socio cultural and economic context to product uh, to the production of art and the innovative industries had facilitated modern art to go for high octane experiments so today we know that like artists are ready to experiment with the different mediums anything is a medium like joseph boy said anybody could be an artist now today anything could be a medium right from emails to text messages to whatsapp messages to anything anything is a medium today so when new technologies are developing when new mediums are used by artists like there should be a new way of art criticism also in place so if in case art criticism is silent then we should say that enough art critics are not, are not there to to handle this kind of uh, ideas or in the, this kind of ideations the public the pu- the public presentation of these works of art needed connoisseurs to discuss these works in public domain and art criticism became a tool for expressing the scholarship and the purpose of purpose of the art art critic himself like when people demanded more and more uh, you know before people started showing the urge to know more about the works exhibited art critic also got that 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 kind of a stature that through his own interpretation or through his own words people started looking at the work of art because as you know that whether, whether figurative or abstract the the in a taken in a larger context work of art is an abstract entity because it is uh, it is liable to be interpreted because each person could read in his or her way there is no absolute meaning about a work of art but then somebody somebody holds that or takes up the position of being authoritative somebody becomes an authority that person become that he or she becomes an art critic and his uh, his or her views becomes important view become important it was the ability of the art critic to make an opinion vis-a-vis the work of art that made art criticism a thing of judgment and like in any other sphere of value judgment the popularity of art criticism was directly proportional to the pro- popularity of the viewer of the writer who wrote and the popularity of the press that brought it out to the public so this is something uh, something very 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 normal thing very natural thing suppose if somebody is very famous if somebody some work of art is uh, really good and a famous person says and times of india publisher or cn cnn ibn or ndtv they actually telecast a, 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 a program on that particular work then this become is there a program no yep yeah. <clears throat> so so that that particular work becomes important because it is the authority who has spoken about it and the medium that has actually proliferated so so it's basic, basically the the person the art critic also takes a very authoritative position for example like in in, in indian context uh, the top personality top art critics like art historians like say geeta kapoor or shivakumar or b n goswami you know people like that if somebody if people like they them come to this uh, to this camp and they talk about one particular work actually that carries a lot of weight and because of their words carry a lot of weight they don't often speak out that liberally right so it it is uh, art critic also takes a very 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 authoritative position uh, in 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 due course of time art when seen as an independent pursuit of an individual artist totally inspired by divine madness and genius for innovative innovating new ideas and styles art criticism could not have taken an absolutely different path so it's a, it's a case i'm uh giving in a in a in a different way like for example when we we say that artists are like possessed with or obsessed with a sort of divine madness they are geniuses if that is the case maybe like you don't agree art critic also is divinely mad because you, madness identifies the madness you know if 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 you are carrying a gucci bag 
only the other person who knows about the gucci bag will identify that okay you are uh, handling hand, you know carrying a, a gucci bag you are uh, you are uh, you are actually wearing a high end per- perfume the other person comes to if he or she is aware of it right otherwise it is just a passing fancy so similarly in the same way you identify the madness of a genius artist then the critic also naturally becomes a genius because there there can't be a different path you know you cannot you cannot uh, fight uh, say a heavyweight boxing boxing champion uh, with your lightweight so you need to be equally equally powerful maybe i am making a high claim but then challenge me the econo- the economics of art was hardly discussed as aesthetics and the social values of a work of art vis-a-vis the personal history of the artists were seen as the prime moving factors of a work of art art criticism like any other uh, like in any other country in in india too revealed uh, uh, revealed in personal opinions scholarship and judgment and the appearance of it in popular mediums became imperative not only for the reading public but also for the newspaper establishment itself when keshomalli passed away there was a condolence meeting in 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 delhi so where an important artist actually commented uh, commented that artists from say jaipur from bhopal from indore from different places they come to delhi to have their exhibitions in lalit kala academy at that time what they wanted was just a few lines written by kesho malik either in the catalog in the i mean that time it was not co- called a catalog brochure or in his column in hindustan times or times of india it was just so jokingly another artist said kesho malik sahab was so liberal so genuine and so human that if he didn't feel anything about that work of art shown to him he will write a few lines of poetry lelo means like he won't actually send anybody you know empty handed he used to bless them with a few lines of poetry artists were happy they maybe like they painted a a, a, a child actually begging child ch- ch- child beggar you know maybe kesho malik's lines must be talking about uh, tare and chanda and all those things like you know sun star moon uh, all those creamy nights dreamy nights etc etc i mean but there was no conflict so th- here this this establishment like in newspaper or the tv or any 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 establishment they also needed some kind of an authority to speak about a work of art or about an artist <coughs> but there again these critics were not talking about the economics of this work means what kind of a financial condition what kind of an economic value actually operating behind this work of art its proliferation its reception its uh, buying selling etc etc somehow it was our personal interpretation art criticism or critics as well as the popular mediums had turned a blind eye on economics of art and the economics of the locations where art and art criticism appeared so generally speaking like a subodh gupta's work like uh, they, they, those are produced in huge huge factories but when you write about a hungry god i think i think you are all familiar with that particular work the huge skull well uh, uh, with uh, this burtons welded together so when an art critic writes about that particular work no, he or she is not going to ask that how much money has gone behind it or who has welded it in which factory and what is the transportation cost etc etc maybe this is not the uh, uh, this is not the primary concern of an art critic art critic is supposed to deal with the aesthetical part of that particular work but somehow this financial dimension this economic dimension has to be brought into this larger scope of art criticism so that it looks more real it looks more 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 human in that in that sense maybe like art critics are lacking in this particular ability to you know maybe ideate in that way anyway but with the advent of global economy and also with the establishment of an organized art market economics and its outcomes became became more important than the individualistic value judgment judgments purely based on the cult of a critic or the cult of the artist now today we all know this this interesting factor that art critic stands at the last you know if you if you take that hierarchy uh, the, the the pyramidical structure 
or or a, or a sort of sort of hierarchy if we if we if we uh, build around this art scene we can see that the critic is the person who is standing the last i mean he 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 doesn't have any position or he he or she doesn't have any position up there he is the last one to say why because the, our our whole idea of dealing with art or hide, uh, whole idea of ideating art has has been shifted from its aesthetic value to economic value so <clears throat> so somebody from christies or southbees will come and tell you that this artist is very important today so there is no keshav malik there is no sunil chopra there is no ranjit hoskote there is no joni ml there is no x or y somebody from a financial establishment somebody from a gallery or a powerful financial establishment will come and tell you that this particular work of art is very important for example recently now in uh, solomon guggenheim museum in new york uh, a vs gaithonde show is happening a, a retrospective is happening couple of people are talking like they are almost like a going uh, going orgasmic i would say if i use the word correctly they are going they are, they are, they are in shivers and shudders when they sp when they speak about vs gaithonde but my question is like uh, that person is coming from uh, 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 from a from a collector's family she or he is i mean is you know the the, the driving force behind this particular retrospective show but my question is that if, during the last 40 years why there was a silence kept, kept on this particular artist when we say when we go gaga over any artist we don't think that the critics have already talked about in a very subtle way but now you are taking it further ahead because the financial value so somehow if at all art criticism is silent today because of this economic uh, this predominance of this economic value or the discussion on uh, the economic value of a work of art if at all these spaces of art criticism have shrunken today it should be seen as the failure of a discipline which could not take care of the thriving implications of a changing economy perhaps it's a self accusation self criticism maybe uh, as art critics we are not able to handle that particular aspect of economic economic changes happening around the work of art art criticism's die hard attitude towards pure judge judgment of aesthetical value amply sprinkled by the moral stance of an art art critic where the last things the popular mediums wanted or they th they thought that their readers wanted because the spaces allotted for an individual ramblings could have been used effectively for for producing wealth so there was a johnny ml during 19 1990s who used to ramble who used to behave like a raging bull in his writing who used to be a, 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 who used to his moral authority to 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 barge against or it literally bark against you know art artists or the art scene in general but slowly slowly what happened was that if they are giving me four col four four inches column the the editor could say or editor could see that uh, instead of allowing one person to bark against a larger society let that that column be that space be gone to maruti suzuki so that so much of money comes in as in, in terms of advertisement that exactly i am not exaggerating this happened to my personal career so i am talking from my first hand experience that this is what happened like the, when we talk about the spaces uh, space spa, art criticism spaces have shrunk over a period of time it is because of that instead of letting one person to go on and on and for or against a particular work of art based on so called moral authority or right i mean i have been accused of some some sort of a self righteousness so this self righteousness so it is better to remove him or her from that place and put real estate advertisement so that there will be a kind of you know democracy there could be democracy established in terms because if you want to buy a, 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 a house somewhere then you can buy it looking at the advertisement than than just listening to somebody's rambling <clears throat> even when the shrinking media space for art criticism was a major concern for the artists as well as art critics and the other players in the art scene the art magazines and other publications did not pitch in to provide alternative spaces for art criticism that is again a complaint or an accusation from a criticism a critique from my side when newspapers were giving 
less and less space slowly slowly taking away the critical space for art from their own publications our art journals the so called art journals there in the in the brochure for uh, jaipur art summit also you can see a few art journals names our art journals were also not helping they were also not promoting the kind of art that has been happening in a big country in a huge country called india they were not helping enough in the name of art criticism and up to an extent creating uh, catering to the growing demand for auth uh, authentication and endorsement of merchandise that the galleries museums and art fairs were handling they too produced a sort of art writing which masqueraded themselves as informed art criticism and uh, through materials for future art history so these magazines also produced in house art history so that that those that art history could become endorsing material for the future market there was no art criticism in there it was in a way helping the economics to grow but uncritically economic growth too needs criticism not just applause though this art magazine respond to, responded to art criticism unlike the popular mediums responding to the changing economic climate they too were very one sided and could not perceive that new art criticism could be equally critical about the bad effect of economics in art too because uh, uh, critics were not allowed to speak about the economic implications of a work of art what's your problem that is that is the question what's your problem you just look at the beauty of color you are talking about the beauty of that red the shades of that gray when you you keep on writing like a, like a dostoevskian character sitting in the middle of night under a small light you are writing or you are typing your 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 moral angst about or your aesthetic aesthetical interpretation about a work of art somewhere the next morning somebody asking you that what's your problem if you are writing only this much fine why are you thinking about how much money subodh gupta is making or how much money x or y is making so so this was how we 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 actually pushed art criticism into a kind of a very old practice where you now nowadays art critics don't look like uh, you know seriously young people you know uh, however you go to gym work out very well <laughs> try to look, look look good but they are not looking good they are looking very old because art criticism has become a very very old practice during the <coughs> uh, yeah economic growth to need, uh, yeah, sorry yeah but but the moment the market crashed they too withdrew these slots because the programs were not economically viable I means television channels also with you interestingly today when unprecedented uh, precedented amounts are invested on a work of art both the work of art and the artist become important news items for both the press and television but uh, art becomes important art becomes uh, art art occupies or art would occupy a larger space in the media whether it is press print, print media or television channels only when art makes huge amount of money you must have noticed yesterday in yesterday in facebook this, uh, facebook I, I, even in newspaper it was uh, a particular news was doing the rounds uh, andy warhols uh, elvis presley and uh, marlon brando these two uh, you know prints silk screen prints actually gathered some 165 million dollars you know so that was the news elvis presley's aesthetic i mean andy warhol's aesthetic implications are have have actually taken taken a backstage back back seat but ironically the reports go directly to the money earned the struggles that the artist had faced while working or living and the agencies that helped in earning this kind of money that are reduced to a few lines filled filled in with the superlatives and adjectives adjectives about the aesthetics of the transacted work of art then aesthetic in, in, interpretation or aesthetic judgment became a kind of spice you put in a, a, a little bit of this little bit of that little bit of color little bit of space little bit of dislocation displacement post colonialism all these things come a little bit so that it looks good <clears throat> economic growth has brought alternative media spaces for uh, for us mainly through information communication communication technologies which <clears throat> which uh, look at once liberal and sensorial however i observe that a fair amount of art criticism has now migrated to these spaces where expression of opinion on aesthetics and economics is not curtailed by editorial policies that control both space and opinion 
for example like if you want to write something in facebook or in in your blog or any other places like that internet virtual space there no editor is going to tell tell you that this is bad or this is good you can actually write your opinion there or you can actually share the kind of uh, writings that you like alternative online platforms blogs and micro blogging sites help in proliferating radical opinions about art which in the long run could actually provide material for generating new art criticism so my my prediction almost a projection is that these things that is happening today in online platform could actually give the real material for, for future art history and the criticism but often the opinions expressed in these online platforms are cynical if not critical but the problem is again we have a lot of cynicism in us hidden early morning you get up you look at the facebook scrolling down and you see a lot of things which will evoke some kind of a, some kind of a uh, nausea some kind of an angst some kind of a cynical response to it and it, it takes a lot of courage to hold it back i used to actually type it out and the, then after posting it then you 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 really find that you shouldn't have done it but now i'm mature enough to you know stop myself uh, so the cynicism cynicism could be one thing that actually become a self sensorial you can you, you that that itself will stop you you know uh, to 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 saying some uh, from saying something in the public space we are still waiting for a balanced approach towards aesthetical value judgment and economic implications in the art in art criticism in this context i am faced with two questions one should art criticism continue with the same old fervor of value judgment irrespective of economic changes that have happened in the art market or industry should it be a purist approach or two should there be a new art criticism that caters to those who look for both judgment and economics in art so should we mix up these two values what kind of value Uh, aesthetical value a work of art generates in our society as well as uh, what kind of a, uh, economic value it creates can such kind of a, an art, art criticism possible the former stands for a purist approach and the latter for an adjust, adjusted approach the uncompromised position of the former would perhaps eventually be used by the same art market for authenticating the wares if you are purely judging the art on based on aesthetical purpose you may not get any applause at that time but maybe in future the same material that you have written may be taken as authentication certificate so so and so has said <coughs> like this and the compromised informed and egalitarian position of the latter that means mixing the economics and the aesthetics could also used for the same in the art market in future so that also could become a material for future market that means it is high time that we change our outlook of art criticism we need to recognize the fact that there are art criticisms not art criticism art criticisms which consider aesthetics alone economics alone and the aesthetic and economics combined there is art criticism that needs to be hailed for its diligent pursuit of enriching and extend, extending the thought process of the artist through interdisciplinary studies though cultural criticism also claims a position in the shrinking empire of art criticism while encouraging such cross transactions we could try giving an autonomous ta ta status to an evolved art criticism so we need we need to look for that evolved art criticism which actually holds some kind of dignity it should be given dignity but that too needs economic support to thrive but that that kind of an art criticism also should be supported by economic factors i do not know who would stand up for an evolved art criticism but i am sure the time has finally arrived for it art criticism which is interdisciplinary yet oriented more to art and artists is that possible when we say art and artists in the evolved context of new art criticism do they hold much water there is always this question what exactly does a work of art say what does an artist say about his or her work of art often as art critics many feel that a work of art ceases to say things the moment it is transacted as a high value entity and the artist also talks about it in monetary terms that is quite unfortunate when the the moment the work of art is exhibited people talk about a uh, yeah, great so and so has come up with a new style so and so has done a, a new body of work but the moment it is sold then people talk about kitne ke becha i have heard people talking about uh, kitna peti mila kitna rokda mila maal uthaya 
I mean, this is the way art is actually speaking. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. This is this is from the ground I'm talking. Like people talk about a work of art, mal peti, uh, you know, idhar se uthao, udhar se do. I mean, all these things are happening in the name of name of art. Rather, he or she is forced to talk in those terms. Means even the artist is forced to talk about like you know, my work is sold for this, this, this. Looking at a work of art after a few deliberations on its medium, size, and the obvious meaning, it becomes a complete responsibility of an evolved art critic to take it further and it is not possible without interdisciplinary approach. So if at all we need a kind of evolved art, I mean evolved way of looking at art beyond this, you know, uh, making it a commodity object, a fetish object, we need to evolve a, a, a sort of art criticism which would help also talk about its aesthetical value with the same rigor that you use for talking about its economic achievement. Now we, sta we are standing at the crossroad as art critics, whether to remain, the, remain purists or embrace multidisciplinary approaches without losing focus on art. For example, I used to tell, I, I, I can definitely take the name Koj, Koj International. Koj is a wonderful platform uh, in Delhi, which is proliferated elsewhere also. Koj actually presents a lot of interesting projects every year which is based on media, which is based sometimes based on science, sometimes based on uh, multimedia, etc, etc. But the same work of art, which is created with a lot of information, lot of knowledge, lot of erudition, which has gone behind in making those work of art is written about by people, the usual people, the usual suspects who know about Vincent van Gogh cut his ear or Picasso. Uh, drew, uh, you know, Picasso had uh, uh, three girlfriends. I mean, this kind of art critics or art historians go and uh, see this highly disciplined or high, highly evolved art practices and write. Unfortunately, these art critics' voices are heard in this context also. So my my demand is like, we let us curtail, let, let, let us stop this kind of art criticism hap from happening. Let us create an evolved art criticism. So if an artist is doing something. Anybody should not walk in and make a criticism. Instead of that, uh, that artist also, that critic also should be equally learned. He should, he or she should know what he or she is addressing. So I, I told Pooja Su, the director of, uh, 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 you know, coach, that if you are creating a new body of works using new knowledge, then you should also help new criticism to evolve. So they have now, you know, in-house critics. In the sense, with each project, there is in-house critics. It's not because that I said, you know, I don't have any claims like that. Please don't report it to, back to her like that, you know. So what I'm saying, this was a suggestion made, right. And as a closing note, I would like to say that in our society, there are a lot of art criticism happening today, in plural, criticisms happening today. I mean, critique of the society through visual mediums. You could see it happening in popular films, posters, political banners, Facebook, calendar art, graffiti, public performances and other mediums. So art itself is becoming a criticism. Art, it is not that like you need to write and show. Art actually, criticism is actually performing in itself. So again, again, actually I am cutting my own, own feet, you know, my own legs. I am saying that, that you cannot call a critic and remain in a purist zone and say that like, you know, I am right. I cannot be self-righteous anymore because criticism is happening within the work of art. Even with the performances, graffitis, political posters, I mean anything, anything uh, informed performance, is, uh, criticism is happening. <coughs> today, perhaps today, art criticism has become a performative act. It has transcended beyond words. Criticism has become visual rather than verbal. But the interesting point is that eventually these performances also need a critic to mediate for posterity. So even the criticism needs a mediation today. So there is a, there is a never ending chain. It has to be. So even chroniclers, somebody who is right, maintaining a diary, that, be, that could become a kind of a part of criticism in the whole process. Call him or her historian or critic, a sociologist or an anthropologist, a journalist or a chronicler. 
he or she reminds a critical mediator therefore by default a critic an art critic thank you